So we are a practice of architects and interior designers and we work in the UK and abroad. We were set up in 1997 and we have steadily grown since then to be a practice of over 100 people. Uh, and we are based out of two offices. Uh, I'm talking to you from our Shoreditch office in the T building. And we also have an office in Bristol as well. As a practice, we, uh, we pride ourselves on the kind of diversity of the work that we undertake. It's really important for us as a practice. It's the thing that helps us in terms of design and helps uh, inform projects and our thinking process. So we work in uh, the school sector, hotels, workplace, retail. We've been Fred Perry's chosen designer for their worldwide stores for the last 10 years, uh, as well as public realm projects. Uh, we've recently completed Eccleston Yards in Fitzrovia for Grosvenor, which was taking an old uh, car park and reimagining that for a really flexible space. So uh, we've got some other exciting projects that we're working on at the moment. We've got a new build hotel in Shoreditch, not far from here. And then we're uh, converting an ice factory in uh, Belgravia uh, into a mixed use scheme of office, retail and restaurant. And that will hopefully be starting on site in the autumn. So quite a, a variety of projects, but I'm gonna to talk to you today about Cromwell Place. And you can see a little excerpt from that project on the screen at the moment. And uh, you, I'm sure you get lots of people selling, telling you how exciting projects are, but this one truly is a wonderful project to work on. Uh, it's a hugely exciting uh, concept in many ways, because it'll really add to South Kensington's kind of rich vibrancy. And it's uh, first of a kind as well, in terms of its public art space and membership model. Uh, and it applies the flexible working concept to the art industry uh, with rentable exhibition space, viewing rooms, art storage, and office for galleries. So it's really quite unusual in terms of what it offers. And I think it's also fair to say that it's never been done before in the UK or Europe. There are a couple of sites in America where it's been done, but we are for sure first in the UK and Europe. So it is really a series of buildings that are a hub for the arts. And the vision for the project is to be about creating innovative space that's both flexible and has a community-centered approach in terms, of, in terms of what we deliver. So just a bit of background. We were first uh, engaged on the project back in 2014 when we won an architectural competition to design a new cultural destination in South Kensington. And the brief was to convert five grade two listed townhouses into a new home for 30 galleries uh, and creating this innovative new cluster. For us and the client, what was really important was to improve and to celebrate the character of these wonderful uh, listed buildings that I'm going to take you through in a minute, but to give them the flexibility that gallery operators would need from, from, those, from those spaces. So we were tasked with the sensitive renovation of the exterior of Cromwell Place to remove certain elements of the building, which I'll talk to you in a minute about at the back, to create a new pavilion art gallery as well, to complement what we've got in terms of the listed buildings as well. And it's also fair to say that we are packing a lot into what is a very small space and a tight site. So we've got space for 30 galleries, we've got uh, a new built pavilion, we've got art storage, we've got viewing rooms, We've got an awful lot that I'm going to take you through in terms of what we've, what we've got. Um, so as I mentioned, Cromwell Place is a membership organisation offering the sort of best in class and it will open in autumn this year. It got practical completion at the end of last week and uh, the galleries are now moving into the spaces uh, and, and, and making their homes there. Uh, and we will, we've delivered effectively 35,000 square feet of gallery space within the buildings that we're going to show you. In terms of its originality, it was designed in 1858 by Charles James Freak, the Victorian townhouses that you see. Um, and as part of that, uh, it, it then was immersed within the art world as Sir John Lavery took over the space 
in number four, and he lived in number four, which is the building straight ahead of you. And then he had his uh, studio in number five, which is the large window that you see on the left-hand side as well. So what I'm just gonna do is just take you through some of the initial designs, and then to finish off with some of the uh, almost finished, not quite, uh, these pictures were taken at the end about two weeks ago, so it's, it's very close to finishing. Um, whoops, clicking the wrong screen there. Uh, right, there, you, hopefully you can see that. So in pink, that's one to five Cromwell Place, uh, just south of Cromwell Road with the, the V&A and uh, the Natural History Museum and just to the north of South Kensington Tube Station. So a really prominent position and an urban block within South Kensington. When we first encountered the buildings, this was back in 2014, we came across these rather beautiful, well-mannered Victorian buildings that had generally been really quite well kept externally. This picture was taken from 2014. But when you move around the site, you noticed that there were actually some pockets of space to the side of the building that had been perhaps more unloved. So this is the space between the back of the listed buildings on the left and the Muse buildings to the right, which are third place Mews. And what had happened in between was over time, one to five had been extended for the use of the buildings internally. So back then they were office uses uh, and they were kept as office uses until 2014 and uh, they were periodically extended. So you couldn't really see where the back of the list of buildings were, where the new additions had started because of all of these one and two story extensions uh, to the rear. Internally, we, we discovered some great features, some great paneled rooms, some less impressive rooms, but you could see the historical detailing that was still evident in some of the corners in. And then internally, we could also discover some, some older openings that were, were used to connect between the buildings. So from a starting point, a lot of interesting uh, features within the building, but certainly lots to, 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 to think about, to contemplate as we thought about how we might use this building. I mentioned Sir John Lavery, a really famous portrait painter of the period. He painted Sir Winston Churchill in this room. This is number five, uh, Cromwell Place, where his studio was. And we felt it was really important that we needed to understand the history of the building and to play on this as part of our response to thinking about how we were going to organize the listed buildings in terms of where was going to be at the front of house, where was going to be the back of house, and how might we get the best out of the listed buildings. So the first uh, move that we made was to remove all of the single and two-story additions to the back of the list of buildings which are indicated here in pink to effectively clear the site of the poor quality additions to the existing buildings. What that then enabled us to do was to create a singular pavilion-like building at the back of this space that had a courtyard to the front and a small garden area to the back that then allowed us to think about that new pavilion as a series of rooms that would then have an articulation facing north with the north lights that could get light into the gallery space below and then to think about how the sculptural form of that roof could then be adapted to give us that strong totality of, of the architecture in terms of seeing it in the round and seeing it from above so that we created this sculptural looking building sitting in this very historic context of the Muse building to the right and the taller townhouses to the left hand side. If you look then at the plan, this is the ground floor plan. We kept the, set, we kept the arrangement of the rooms uh, exactly as they were originally designed um, in the 19th century. So you can see the five houses on the left hand side uh, we made subtle interventions to enable us to connect through some of those houses. And importantly, we created this glazed link to the back of the list of buildings, that allowed us to have that horizontality and that connectivity that enabled us to connect all of the houses. And then sitting within its own courtyard space is the new single volume gallery space sandwiched between the mews and the list of buildings. 
Moving up to the first floor, you then start to look down on top of the gallery space and you see the revealing of the roof. And on the left hand side, the listed rooms that then have the connections through either between the rooms or at the back on the, on the linking corridors. The section was really important, and I think it's fair to say uh, that we packed a lot into the site in terms of what we were trying to achieve. So from the outside, when you see the building today, it's a very modest, large, single-story building, but really what is housing is so much more than the volume you see at ground level. So at ground level, you're, you're experiencing a new-built pavilion, art gallery. Below that is a whole level of art storage, environmentally controlled so that collectors, gallery owners can house the art collections in a safe environment below the gallery. And then below that are all the plant equipment that we need to make the, uh, the gallery a success and to serve the buildings uh, that you see in the distance. And then on the rear elevation, we've inserted glazed links that allow us to make connections horizontally so that they can operate as individual houses or they can operate as a group of five listed buildings that the, the visitors can connect through horizontally. The section through the other way uh, shows really quite how tight the site is. You can see the edge of the closet wings on the left here with where the mouse is. You can see the link bridges that we've created to connect the two. And you can see how we've used the scale of the rooms to suit the function. So on the lower levels, We've got galleries, we've got viewing rooms, uh, and we've got the ability to present art. And then on the upper levels where the scale changes and we get smaller scale rooms, they make perfect offices for the gallery owners that can have a permanent presence within the buildings. Again, in section you can see the single story glazed uh, top roof light uh, pavilion with art storage below and plant below that. And then to the right hand side, we've got the restored muse buildings, uh, which kept their use as, as residential. Some early renders showing what the new pavilion will look like. So the introduction of a boundary wall, a new courtyard space that was split over two levels, an opportunity to introduce sculpture within that space. And then the formation of the new gallery with its distinctive gold wing north lights that are running from south to north. Just on the left, you get a glimpse of the glazed corridor, the glazed wings that are connecting the back of the listed buildings. Stepping into the space, stepping into the courtyard, the end of the building reveals itself. It reveals itself as a picture window into the gallery that's going to be uh, beyond. You see down into the courtyard space below, a setting for sculpture, and equally at the ground level, again, they're setting for sculpture in that position. And then on the left-hand side, reading the, the, um, the, the extensions, the original extensions, should I say, of the list of buildings in terms of the closet wings. Looking from the back, so here we are stood in number five, looking back at the gallery, you can see the ends of the north lights presenting themselves uh, in the view. You can see how we're using that to get light into the gallery space. Uh, and the volume is uh, just over four and a half meters high, so we can get sculpture in there, we can get large pieces, and we can give the client the flexibility that they want from that space. Stepping inside the gallery, uh, it's about flexibility, it's about a single volume, it's about creating the environment for presenting art. It's about having the ability to get north light into the space that you see in, in the view at the moment. Uh, and also to get glimpses at the front and the back, back into the courtyard spaces. So those settings that we envisage for sculptures will allow that view and that connection back into the landscape. Um, so, just before I give you some almost finished photographs, um, I think it's just worth talking about some of the challenges that we had on the project. And I think the first challenge that we had was to convince the planners that this was the right thing to do. I think sitting here today presenting it, it seems like it was the obvious thing to do. But back then in 2014, 
Uh, this was an office building with lots of different tenants and the local authority were very concerned about the loss of employment and the fact that the use was going to be changed and what was that going to do to the environment. And we went through no less than seven pre-planning applications to develop our thoughts and designs before they were satisfied that we got the right design. Once we were in that position, we then had to uh, present to the local interest groups who, who were very prevalent in this part of town and convince them that we could do a sensitive uh, project and respect the existing buildings, but also introduce this modern piece of architecture. And the fact that we were building a double basement didn't go unnoticed. Um, and that was certainly one of the challenges that we had was to convince everyone that it was right and it was proper that we should build this double basement to house the plant equipment, to house the art storage, and to make the pavilion this single story, jewel like building in the middle of the space. Um, if I then just take you through uh, some recently finished or getting close to, so the historic buildings, we restored the detailing that was missing. We kept what we found, but enhanced it. Um, this is the club room in number, uh, number four, about to be fitted out. So we've retained the mirrors, uh, the servicing, which was a real challenge, was done uh, very, very discreetly, so that it's not, uh, it's not in your face, but it's there when you, when you search for it. And then the rooms themselves, uh, protecting the original detail, protecting those fireplaces, but giving the opportunity for the galleries to have an amount of wall space and floor space to present sculpture and art um, is really, really important. And the way that we've integrated the heating and the cooling within these uh, bespoke timber units that sit neatly below the windows so that they are kind of discreetly placed but give the environmental control that the galleries are looking for. As I say, this was about two weeks ago, so as you can see, the protection is literally coming off the blackened steel that wraps the pavilion from both the top and from the sides. You're getting that long vista view through from the courtyard all the way through from the front of the building to the back on both sides. Uh, and a, a view looking from the first floor down in terms of the entrance courtyard space. Um, again, they're just about to, to, to introduce a tree there at the corner but a very, a very tight space, but one that we feel can be adequately used for, for presenting sculpture. And it's a split level courtyard as well. We have an upper level in this location and then a, a lower level down to the south. The fifth elevation is often talked about, but never more so with this building in terms of what you see as you're looking out at the back of the building across the new gallery and seeing the north wing, the gull wing form of the roof light getting the north light into the gallery, still respecting the scale of the adjacent muse properties. And then towards the rear, with number five on the left and the small courtyard garden on that side, and what you're seeing here is the top of the link bridge that is again picking up on the black and steel uh, material that then defines the new, the new architecture, the new form that comes into play. Stepping into the gallery, so I'm looking here from one of the closet wings, stepping into the gallery, we've got a, a very discreet servicing strategy in terms of how air is distributed within the space. It's about creating wall space, it's about creating a light and airy volume with that roof sculpture that is giving us the, the north light that we want. Looking back towards the entrance, getting a glimpse view from the window back in terms of the uh, listed buildings, and then looking straight on at the, the main gallery space, looking to the back of the building, uh, where we'll have a garden at number five. The link bridges, the link bridges were doing lots of things. They were connecting us horizontally so that we could connect all of the houses so that they could act either as independent houses or we could act together, but they were also masking the distribution of services. So as you can imagine, trying to, to, to weave uh, air and water and power around, this was a very good device to allow us to do that, to create this horizontal conduit effectively that could connect all of the buildings to, to, to service. And then as we stepped from the main uh, listed buildings down uh, the changing level to the main gallery spaces, we created these incidental moments 
where you're experiencing the, the old closet wings that we're going through, uh, and we're quite intentionally contemporary with the way that we detail the timber, left the brickwork as it is, and then you're stepping from one environment into another. View looking the other way. And as I mentioned, it opens in the autumn of this year, uh, and uh, we're super proud of what we've created and hope to be able to show some finished photographs in the very near future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Fantastic. Perhaps if you stopped sharing screen for a sec, then. Yes. Yeah. You properly. Wonderful. Um, you know, do pitch questions for Paul in the in the chat box. Um, I mean, I, I'm just intrigued, um, Paul. But the the obviously, if one looks over the past kind of fifty, a hundred years, the, the, where the art mark, where, where the art galleries have been in London, has kind of shifted, kind of quite significantly. And this feels like a part of London that there hasn't previously been kind of commercial galleries in operation. Well, could you say something about? For your, from maybe from your client's perspective, why why they they saw South Kensington as a um, you know a, a potential location? I think I think the client our client was looking for this this unique opportunity that could present uh, a series of buildings that could house a collection of galleries, and that was really important that they had a critical mass of galleries that that could that could go to one place and have that continual turnover of new exhibitions so that when people came to, to the buildings, they were seeing something new each time they visited. And that idea about you having a collection of galleries there was, was really important. The, the ability to create as well a singular volume, a pavilion that could house a different type of collection, a different type of, 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 of sort of art was also important. And I think it was that, you know, from speaking to them, it took them years to find this building. You know, they were hunting for it. The fact that it doesn't necessarily have a, a direct history to commercial art, it has a history to, 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 to public art in terms of the V&A and everything else, um, was important. But I think that the delivery connection, the art connection that was there is, is, is feeling like it's a, good, it's a good fit for them uh, as, as well. And as we talked about this, just before we came online, the the issue, the, the current model is that you visit different galleries around London, and what you really want is a hub. You want a collection of galleries in one place. That means that you can see the galleries that you want to see, and as a result of that, we've got galleries from the states, from the Middle East, from the Far East, from the UK. You've got a real mix of different tenants that are taking space. So I think. They're, they're all hugely positive and as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a first of its kind, but it feels like it's a model that really should work in lots of different other countries and other different environments. Even Did different you, you mentioned there were, there were other comparable examples overseas, were there, were there specific ones you visited? Uh, we didn't actually get to visit them, but there is, there is one in San Francisco in a, in a warehouse which does something very similar but not to the scale, I don't think, that we're doing here at, at Cromwell Place. So uh, it, is, it, is, it is unique in that regard. And obviously... And I, think, I think also because galleries, galleries don't need to be renting space 12 months of the year. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, I wouldn't say it's a busted model, but it's a model that is not flexible enough. They need it for maybe three or four months of the year, throughout the year. They don't need it for 12. And what Cromwell gives them is, is a base in terms of their office, but flexibility to be able to run exhibitions as they need to throughout the year. And presumably your opening date relates to freeze, or am I wrong? Is, is, I mean, uh, is that still the, the, the model of the art fair is still, I mean, even in these rather turbulent moments for the art market, presumably? I think it depends who you talk to, but I think the kind of the art market, the art fair, has an appeal, but I think equally it's perhaps not sustainable in the long term. You know, you have to fly somewhere, you're going to three or four destinations. This is something that offers you a art fair type of model, but for the whole 12 months, and it's all in one place. So again, from that perspective, it's 
it seems like it's a great a great model to, to, to develop. And reliant on curating a range of galleries who are sympathetic to one another in terms of the kind of work that they're presenting, presumably. Exactly, and I think the, the advantage that we've got is that uh, with Cromwell, we can play with the scale. So the smaller scale rooms can, can work with certain artists, the bigger rooms will work with others. The pavilion will work for a different type of artist. So it's, it gives us that flexibility to, to suit the different tenants and what they might need in terms of the space. So, you know, we talk about historic buildings being super flexible. And I think this is a great example of, of these period buildings having that flexibility and using scale of space to really, to, to its best advantage, if you like, in terms of the programme that goes in. And are you working on other art spaces at the moment in the practice? Or is this a, a we, we, have one of them, we have one other at the moment, but unfortunately I can't tell you about that because it's in the very early stages and I'm not trying to be difficult, but we have another one, but uh, at the moment it's, it's, it's early stages. But uh, yeah, we hope to, to be able to talk more about this project for sure as we get some, uh, some photographs done to really celebrate it. And we can see it with our tech because at the moment yes. we're delivering the shell and what we really want to see is some great work in there to, 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 to really show it off. Do you know what the first show is going to be in the, in the pavilion? They're, they're, they're finalising the programme at the moment. I say it's, it's opening in, in the autumn. Uh, they have, I think it's 31 or 32 members already signed up. So they will have a series of, of events that will start in the autumn to, to, to play out.